I did do a second part to the uh, Signal 535. I seem to have deleted the file on, on YouTube. So to finish up on the uh, the repair of this Signal R535, we replaced the transistor um, and the unit was fine after that. So I've just basically put it all back together, um, given the clean up. The alignment and sensitivity of the set's excellent. It's um, it sort of it detects signals on the on the signal generator of about a half a microvolt, basically as low as the signal generator can go, and it can still pick it up. Um, so let's have a quick listen. I've got it. I'm back at home. I've connected it up to the outside aerial, which is which is a disc cone, um, and have a quick flick through to see what it's like. Now this is with its backlight on on low level. Uh, there's a backlight switch at the back here somewhere. If I can find it. Can't find it. This is it. That's the high level backlight. Um, I'm actually connected to an external aerial, um, external speaker. Let's disconnect the external speaker so you can hear what it sounds like. I mean, it's not bad. It's a tiny little speaker. You could probably actually afford to put a slightly larger speaker in there uh, and make a much better sound quality. Uh, so, just a quick scan through the frequencies. The other thing seems to be is the squelch gate. You have to close it quite a long way for it to. Uh, to squelch, so let's just see if we can get it to uh, start. So that's the manual tuning. So basically, you've got these, this little marker here, you can scroll, scroll along, and that allows you just the frequency up and down. You can do it in you know the individual kilohertz. Hundreds of kilohertz. It's it's really nice and easy to use actually. Uh, this is the mode. It will scan through the channels. So if you've got memory stored in um, stored in channels, you can actually scan through those channels all the time. So that's quite nice. Um, and then you've got a start frequency and stop frequency. Uh, so you start at one three five, and then I think it. I can't remember how you get the second one. There's the end frequency. And then you can just st do a sweet a, st a start search there. Um, I think it's just how would we do that frequency step. So it's doing frequency. Zero, three, zero degrees, four meters, uh, there you go. It's off, getting off searching now. So it's only a five kilohertz steps, obviously, because the, the latest airband frequency steps are now 8.33 kilohertz. Uh, and the set won't actually do 8.33. It will do five, and I think it will do ten. So basically, if you've got five, because it's a fairly wide modulation on these, you can actually hear the adjacent channel without too much distortion. So that's not a problem. You know, it sort of bleeds over. You've got a wide enough bandwidth, basically, on the IF to uh, pick up the the frequency that you're actually trying to listen to. Um, so that's its se sweep um, search mode and then it's got all the other modes as well. Um, I'm trying to get, how to get it out of that mode. That's it's a manual search so if we can search for our channels manually. Uh, so it... That's the various volumes. That's Gatwick, um, Gatwick Approach. Gatwick Tower. It's going to be that busy today. We've had a lot of fog actually, uh, south of England, and a lot of the flights are affected at Gatwick Airport, so maybe there's not a lot coming in and out of Gatwick. Uh, let's try and search up, find some more stuff. I've only got a few channels selected at the moment. There we go. So it's working absolutely fine. Um, it does need um, some frequencies putting into it so we can use it properly. It does sound a lot better with an external aerial. Um, and you can see here it's got an, an aerial for the front as well. So you can actually mount a sort of like a, a rubber duck sort of thing on it, a, a helical or something like that. But obviously I've got the aerial plugged in the back. That's external speaker. 
got a really nice sound on the external speaker. It's obviously got a quite a nice, fairly powerful amplifier. Uh, these are active speakers. I'm using in the back of one of these old computer speakers. And here's some other things that you probably haven't seen and not, don't get an awful lot of use. So I was going to have a look at these down the workshop. This is an FRG100 Yesu, and you can see it in the, in the light there. I need to uh, dig that out. I bought that brand new about 15 years ago, and it's had very little use. Unfortunately, where we are, we've got power lines you can see running next to the house so we get a lot of uh, noise from the mains here and that's an old um, realistics uh, monitor scanner thing that's a nice little thing I think it's made by uh, a GRE is it I, I'm not sure I thought it was maybe it wasn't uh, someone will probably correct me on that but it's a that's a nice little scanner as well but the FRG 100 is really my favorite uh, and that's a nice middle of the range sort of or budget middle of the range um, shortwave radio that I'll have to uh, dig out and uh, maybe wire up in the workshop with an uh, ATU this is the ATU I use on it uh, I bought that from a, a shop in Hancross I don't know if anyone knows of Breadhurst Communications but I bought that and I used to ride past there on the way to work every day and I, I saw that and thought oh that's what I need and bought one of those and they're quite desirable now there's not many about and it's nice because it's tiny you know, it's obviously it's just to receive one only but um so yeah, they're basically they've gone off track a bit here, but the uh, the radio works lovely. I'm very pleased with the repair, and um, thanks for watching, and oh, and happy new year.